So I've got my tenor stock here, the one that I'm going to weigh before and after doing the impregnating. I'm doing just one right now to see how much it changes the weight and also the impregnating liquid is going to get into this beading and combing and I'm hoping it doesn't make it super difficult to clean up. I think I should be able to do it so that's why I'm trying just one. So I've got my kitchen scale here. So 77 grams and I'll impregnate it and see what it weighs. Here's my vacuum system. It's what I'm going to use to impregnate or stabilize this wood. I don't really call it stabilizing, but it's more impregnating. Stabilizing, I think, is for wood that's kind of falling apart. You can use it for wood that's rotted, and you stabilize it, and when you turn it on the lathe, the rotted part doesn't fall apart, and it kind of gives it a cool look. My garage is a complete wreck because of all the Christmas stuff that's here. So... I apologize, please don't report me. So I've already got the stabilizing liquid in here. And here's the tenor stock that weighed 77 grams. It'll help fill in some of these imperfections as well. I don't even know if this is going to sink in here because this is definitely more thick than water. African blackwood and ebony just sink to the bottom. So we'll see what happens. If not, I have a plate that I can push this down in there. So let's see whether it does want to sink or not. So it doesn't, I'll put a plate on there and then I'll show you guys what it looks like and we'll turn the vacuum on. I've got the plate secured with the tenor stock underneath it and not being smart enough to realize that this wood wouldn't float or wouldn't sink in water it's obviously not going to sink in this thick liquid the impregnating liquid and i also in the last video said that african blackwood and ebony sinks i actually don't know if it does or not because i've only used this for stabilizing moose antler which does sink so that's now in place and i will get the glass lid on here and get it hooked up to the air compressor and show you what it looks like. It'll pull, you'll see a bunch of air bubbles as it pulls the air out of the wood and replaces it with this impregnating liquid. There's a lot of reflection from my skylight. Maybe we can see it here. It's starting to pull the vacuum here. Once it pulls it up a bit, we'll start seeing air come out of here. Sorry about the reflection, it's hard to see this thing. There it goes. Starting to see some bubbles there. Now we're getting a lot of them. There. That's all the air that's inside that wood getting pulled out and replaced with the stabilizing liquid. So this will have to stay in here until we stop seeing air bubbles. And then at that point, it goes into an oven for just a little while to set up or harden this stabilizing liquid. So who knows how long this will take. We'll check back in. I've got the light on, I'll set it down. Now we don't have much reflection. It's, you can still see quite a lot of air bubbles coming out. It's been in for, I don't know how long, a little while now, but really wanna see very little activity as far as the bubbles go. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a lot of bubbles in this video coming out at about the 11 o'clock mark. And that is the side of the canister that the uh, piece of wood is on. So it's looking like it's doing pretty good for now. The pump has been on for 
a little over four hours. Now that I've bumped it, it's hard to see. Let's see if it'll calm down. Yeah. There's still a few little bubbles coming out. It's hard to tell with the light shining on it, but you can see them popping. So that's about all the more that it's going to pull out. I'm going to leave it for another hour or so and call it good. Uh, you can tell also that this wood has leached out a lot of color out of it into the um, impregnating liquid. So I expect after I do all of the pieces, this liquid will not be good for anything that's a lighter colored wood. But this is pretty promising, I think. I've taken my piece out of the vacuum and I'm trying to get as much of the um, impregnating liquid off of the outside of it to uh, get it out of the teeth and the, of the cones. I don't want to have a big problem with that. So I'm letting it kind of sit here and drain. I think I'm going to put it on the lathe and spin it and <clears throat> use just a paper towel to get the majority of it off and maybe even send a paper towel down the, down the bore before I put it in the toaster oven. This has to cure or cook, if you will, for about three hours at 200 degrees. Here's the resin that got drained out. This one piece has caused it to change to this color and this was brand new. When it's brand new, it is as clear as water. So I'm really interested to see what happens whenever all of the pieces get done. I have a big concern that some of the pieces that I have, two of them, I cannot get the projecting mounts off of. So I'm going to have to find a way to get those mounts off of there. If not, they won't be that color when we get done. So that's the next challenge. I did spin it on the lathe and used a paper towel. And then I went in between each of the combs with some white hemp to get the majority of the impregnating liquid out of there. I did run a paper towel down the bore, but it's not really that important because I'm gonna bore these stalks out. I'm actually gonna bore out pretty much all of the pieces. And uh, so really the inside isn't that important. I just didn't want a large amount of that liquid to harden right at where I want to start the bore out, which would make it difficult. So it looks pretty good, I think. So now time to cook a bagpipe as you do, 200 degrees, three hours. So here we go. All right, our piece has been in this toaster oven for about a little over three hours. So let's take a look here. Oh, that looks delicious. Cooked perfectly, as you can see light golden crust is forming but no it looks pretty well dried up i don't see any signs of it being shiny or wet so gonna call it good um i couldn't get the mounts off the two tenors so i'm gonna put them in the toaster oven see if i can't dry it out a little bit and get them to come off the side that was down inside the toaster oven some of the resin came out and you can see this kind of dark streak there which i guess really doesn't matter very much but i'm going to put it back in the toaster with this side facing up because this was still a little bit liquid it wasn't liquid it was more like gel and so i got it off real quickly so it wouldn't harden i'm going to put it back in and maybe when it finishes cooking or if it bakes a little bit longer in there this might go away i'm hoping so Putting it back in the toaster oven for a little bit got rid of the dark streak that was left over. And I've got my scale here. Whenever I first started with this piece, it was 77 grams, and it actually weighs less now than when I started with it. And I'm wondering if it's because before I, when I measured it, there was a whole bunch of gunk down the bore of the stock that I didn't clean out. So I am going to try the same thing with the other stock, but I'm going to clean out the bore 
before I do the impregnating and see whether it weighs any more. So really hard to tell, but obviously the impregnating, you could see all the air bubbles coming out. You can actually see a little bit of the liquid there, which that'll be gone whenever I bore this piece out to a regular size um, stock bore. Here we go with the base stock. I've cleaned out all of the gunk from the inside, so this should be a little bit more accurate representation of before and after. All right, 98 grams for this one. After I was able to get the mounts off of the tenor bottom joints from putting it in the toaster oven, I put all the other pieces that I couldn't get the ferrules off of in the toaster oven, and all of them came off except for the base drum stock, which is the one that I weighed on the scale. So I guess that's all right. I've got them all in here, fully submerged with the plate holding them down, and gonna turn on the vacuum here. It doesn't really seal until I push down on the glass. Push down. Let's see if it'll catch. I don't seem to want to right now. Must have some air leaking by here somewhere. There we go, push it down. Take my hand off and we should see, yeah, a lot of bubbles happening. Sometimes you gotta be really careful because if you have so much liquid in here, it'll foam up and come out of this thing, which is actually pulling the vacuum. And that's not what we want. So as you can see, this is pulling a lot of air out of those pieces and replacing it with the liquid, the um, impregnating liquid stabilizer. All right, this is all of the uh, pipe in here now. And the vacuum has been on for about 10 hours or more. So it took quite a while, but really no bubbles anymore. So this needs to set for a while and on to the next step.